This Pride Month is a special one as we look back on the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which have come to be seen as the high-profile beginning of the National Gay Liberation Movement. But 10 years after Stonewall, the LGBTQ plus community found itself at the crossroads of another pivotal moment, the explosion of the AIDS epidemic. By the mid-80s, there were more than 1,400 reported cases of the disease in the U.S. and more than 500 deaths. And as the crisis grew, the disease and the gay and bisexual men who made up much of the afflicted population were met with fear and stigma. Some doctors and nurses even refused to treat them. But in San Francisco, a hub for the gay community, one hospital created a new ward dedicated to fighting the disease. It was known as 5B, and the nurses behind it are now the subject of a new documentary by the same name. It was built by the nurses there, and they physically built that war. We were making it. We were creating it. The nurses all volunteered for this duty. If I had said no to any of them, they might have done physical harm to me. Cliff had a vision. We were gay. We were straight. We were young. We were old. And they're all kind of kick-ass, even the straight ones. One of the 5B nurses featured in the film, Alison Moed Palercio, joins me now along with Hank Plant, one of the country's first openly gay journalists who covered the AIDS crisis in San Francisco and was also featured. Thank you both for being here. We're happy to be here. Thank you. Hank, let me start by asking you to give younger viewers in particular, who might not remember these days in any way, a sense of the cultural moment right before the AIDS crisis hit and then the effect that AIDS had as it started to take its toll. Gay liberation was in full force. Remember, there was only about a 50-year period in all of world history where sex couldn't kill you. It was that time between penicillin in 1929, and then AIDS came along about 50 years later, 79. So So the sexual revolution happened there. Gay liberation was a big part of it, and then AIDS hit. And when it hit, in the beginning, nobody knew uh, how it was transmitted. Was it airborne? Could you get it from touching surfaces, from touching a person? And then these nurses like Allison showed up, did their job anyway with love and compassion. Allison, let me ask you about the MO that you guys had. Uh, As Hank mentioned and as we talked about uh, in the opening, these patients were really pariahs. I mean, there are shots in the film of people going in to treat them, basically dressed in hazmat suits. Mm -hmm. Yet your approach was completely different. What was the guiding ethos for you and your colleagues? Well, the guiding ethos was our profession as nurses and our capacity as human beings. So it was nurses' care. That's the foundation of our our profession. We saw people who weren't being cared for and, in fact, who were being discriminated against and treated badly. This was shocking to us. But is it fair to say that, that in 5B you put a premium not just on intimate and warm and respectful interaction with with these people who were dying, but also on tactile interaction. Yes, right? it's very fair to say. It's and uh, we wanted to show. Yes, it, it was a scary time. Yes, there was concern about contracting the disease. But for us, we could see that it wasn't something that was contracted casually. That for me, I can say I didn't necessarily feel at great risk, and so. My desire to serve overrode those fears. And one of the ways that we could show that what we believed was true, that it wasn't casually spread, that it was important to care for these patients, was by touching them. And it was also one of the ways that we could give, show them the acceptance and caring that we felt. We have a clip, which I, I think people should see, of a, an AIDS patient talking about how valuable it was to, to be treated in that way. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. I had no human contact for a year, I didn't touch anybody. I mean, you uh, forget love, you forget things like that. It's, uh, when somebody does touch you, you go, wow. It scares me to think that I'll be laying on some slab. Uh, That's what scares me the most. Do you, as you look through this film, I'm curious, do you remember these patients? Like, uh, or were there so many that they all sort of together. They don't blur together. I mean, I don't remember them all, but some of this footage that was taken from the early days or or refers to or um, patients that I knew or took care of, yes, I, I remember them for sure. Let me ask a similar question of you. Do you remember um, 
specific interviews that you did oh, yeah. covering this. Yeah, what stands out in your mind? Well, what stands out is, uh, you know what it's like as a reporter. The, the, the worst part of your day is the beginning of the day. You're looking for a story. you got to find people to interview. And, I, and you're on the air at 5 o'clock. So there's not a lot of time. So I would get on the phone, try, do a story on AIDS, trying to find people to interview. I would call San Francisco General. Uh, they'd help me find somebody. And, you know, they always said yes. These patients always said yes. I mean, they, they, and I had just have such love and respect for them. And they knew they didn't look good, and their, their bosses would see it, their families would see it, but they wanted to help other people they, they, and just talk about what it was like to go through it. So I, I remember very clearly. And one of the things, oh, go ahead, Allison. I was going to say, really, that they talk about the nurses as heroes. I think that it was the patients who were the heroes, because here they were. They were in the throes of a, of a terrible illness that was that was destroying them and disfiguring them and yet they did they let they let themselves be publicly viewed and they taught us about how to care for them so we reached out to them but they also invited us in to this this very difficult journey that yeah. they were taking I think it's worth highlighting again for people who might not remember this that um, the patients were dealing not just with the apprehension that clinicians had about interacting with them but with a bigger sort of political and cultural zeitgeist in which they were being, I think it's fair to say, demonized. There's a clip in the film of William F. Buckley Jr. suggesting that AIDS patients uh, be tattooed. Uh, I can't remember if it was the buttocks and the elbow or something like that. And why should they care? And Ronald Reagan, uh, also was shown in the film, making an announcement that people with HIV are not welcome in the U.S. Let's take a look at that. I've also asked HHS to add the AIDS virus to the list of contagious diseases for which immigrants and aliens seeking permanent residence in the United States can be denied entry. How did statements like that go over in the community of people who were caring for people dying of AIDS and also in the gay community in San Francisco? What do you, what do you remember from your response to I remember the booze. I was standing in front of him. Really? That night in D.C. when he gave that speech. It was an evening uh, speech outdoors. And I made a note in my reporter's notebook that it, that was the first time he ever said AIDS publicly. And uh, six I years into the that. epidemic, six years. And I made a note that night in my reporter's notebook that at the moment he said that, that word for the first time, AIDS, 21,000 Americans had already died. That was my story that night. Honestly, Comments like that were, were like a bludgeon. You know, it, it was hard to keep hearing that these same views were being perpetuated. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we had our work to do. And I think, it, if anything, th this was the sort of comment that, that strengthened our own resolve and that made us want to learn more, to do better, to really serve our patients and to show the world our side of the story so to to show that to show this touch so when to Hank show Clint the embrace, calls, make sure you get him in right away and yeah get him in right away and if someone and and whoever we decide to let onto the unit make sure that they see the values that we adhere to they also that we used consider me. they one. also used to me well, yeah I, talk, i'm going to tell talk you, a little bit but about i didn't that. learn this until we were making this documentary and the director said you know the nurses told me that before you came over there with your camera that 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 they would meet and they would say now be sure to touch the patient on camera we got to send that visual message as i said in the film nurses are subversive they knew how to use the media I'm well, really glad you brought that up because I was thinking of asking about it. I didn't know if it was too in the weeds. You really didn't know at the time that, that uh, there was some media manipulation no, going on? not at all. Zero. No. We were no fools. I mean, <laughs> if we were letting all these media, media onto the unit, if, if yeah. you know, not everyone had the pure motives and the professional reportage yeah. that Hank had. So we, we, want, we were going to get our message across. We were going to make it as difficult as, as we could for them to twist or manipulate what we were saying and doing. Hank, you also say in the film that you believe there is, I'm paraphrasing, a shell-shocked generation of yeah. people who saw so many friends and loved ones die. Um, does this include, is this your generation? Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, being openly gay, uh, I've lost a lot of my friends, maybe most of my friends my age. I'm not the only one I know like that. You don't go through something like that without having it affect you. The way that I think a lot of us have dealt with it was we just compartmentalized it. And we haven't thought about it in this detail. I cried watching this movie. 
uh, when it I finally came why. out. I, I mean, it, it really brought back so much. I started to choke up when we were filming it, when the director was asking me questions. So, uh, yeah. I wish we had another half hour to talk about this. The film is excellent. People should go see it. Uh, and thank you both for being here. Thanks. Thanks sharing very your stories. much. Alison Noah, Palacio, Hank Plant. The documentary, again, 5B. It opens in theaters across the country this Friday. For more information, head to 5bfilm.com.